All right, here's an overview of my off-grid system in the Philippines. This is as loud as it gets. It's a die 16 kilowatt inverter. In here we got uh, circuit breakers. And as you can see, we're off-grid at the moment. So we got a automatic transfer switch that we don't even use because we're off grid. 16,000 watts, we're at 98%. We still got uh, 1.1 kilowatts coming in. The house is using two, and the grid is off. We got 30 kilowatts of factory made batteries, and then I made one that's 15 kilowatt. And I'm going to use this shelving unit. To fill up all these shelves and that'll be 75 kilowatts uh found that it's cheaper and i have more control if i use if i make my own battery and i got a uh <coughs> dolly bms 250 amp that's way overkill so i'll go outside we've got five air cons in this house and no insulation typical philippines house there's one running. A little wild animal right here. <laughs> the damn wild animals around here. I did a video of the windows, so check that out. If you want to know my opinion on windows in the Philippines and what's the best choice for something that you can get made locally, you don't have to order. But there's my attack cat. So, what you saw in there, I had installed by a local installer. Uh, I recommend uh, going to the solar Facebook groups for the Philippines and putting in the specs that you want and letting the installers, uh, the solar companies bid on it because that's what really worked for me. And then you can weed out the crappy. If they can't uh, follow up, I had probably... 30 solar installers offered to give me a quote and I got maybe 10 quotes so they automatically weeded themselves out guys that can't even follow up with a quote but what we got here is a 590 watt bifacial Canadian solar panels even though they're made in China they're still Canadian solar uh, I had my guys uh, do the ground mount so they used the 2x3 um, tubing that's available anywhere in the Philippines and they painted it but it's galvanized so they welded this all up it took them about a week to to get the mounts going and then the solar guys came in and they just uh, did the uh, solar install and so we got uh, nine panels per string 590 watts each bifacial so we've got the solar panels can gain Sun on on both sides so that works out good, especially for low light conditions. Like the sun is almost gone and I'm still getting a thousand watts of power. It's behind the cloud, almost gone. Still getting a thousand watts. That's pretty impressive. Uh, now this is 16,000 watts of panels, but it gives me a lot of power even on a cloudy day. The rainy day, I don't get nothing for power, zero. If it's rainy all day, I gotta switch back over to the grid. So I use the grid as my backup. I don't have a generator or anything. And I'm 90% off grid. So because it's sunny here damn near every day. And even on a cloudy day, it can charge my batteries by the end of the day for sure. But usually by noon. If it's a sunny day, my batteries are charged. And I'm using all the electric I want. Um, and... I'd, I'd like to have uh, another battery, but I don't need another battery for what I'm doing. Just switching back over to the grid. So my last electric bill was uh, 1,000 pesos. The one before that was 1,200 pesos. And I've gone three months with no peso bill. Um, just the hookup charge, which is like 100 pesos per month. So it's dirt cheap to keep the grid as a backup. So they just trenched. They just trenched. Uh, each string's wiring over to the uh, 
combiner box in that room. Set the inverter up. The die inverters are about your best bet in the Philippines. They say that it's the same thing as Solark, um, but I, I don't know. It the display looks the same, but the, it's excellent quality and the fans are not noisy. Mostly, most of the time the fan is off on that unit. But when it comes on, it's not miserable. And, you know, I got a guy living in the room, Makuya, that helps take care of the property here. He lives in that room, and he says at night the fan doesn't come on. Um, it's only during the day when it comes on occasionally. So um, that system that you just saw, minus the battery that I made, that was another 1,000 that I added. But the system that you saw with the two uh, stock batteries, the install of the solar, the wiring... Everything was 10,000 US dollars, about 550,000 pesos at the time. Um, the peso was 55 uh, peso to the dollar. My attack dogs. Sick em, sick em. Uh, so that, that's that, that set up. Uh, I recommend the bifacial panels, even if you don't put them on a ground mount simply because uh, you got glass on both sides of the panel so that keeps your solar uh, solar panel inside sandwiched pretty securely um, it does add some weight because on a normal solar panel they just put like a vinyl white sheet backing and that can peel or it can do whatever with these there's nothing to peel so um, they're just a little bit heavier but if you put them on like a, a roof and you're only one inch off the roof, you're not going to get any bifacial gain. Here, these are 10 feet up, so we we get bifacial gain, but I don't, I can't measure that because I never had these uh, panels sitting anywhere else. But 590 watts is pretty awesome. Um, I could add some more here. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need to. I pull in more power than my inverter can convert right now. It's got a maximum. Uh, 290 amp and these panels will give it more than 290 amps uh, maximum 290 amp 48 volt charging so it can pull in 200 more than 290 amps from the panels and here's the tomatoes that are kind of under the solar panels as an experiment they say you you can do farming under solar panels so we're gonna try it the Sun's pretty intense and it beats up on the tomatoes here so we're trying that but anyways uh, they say uh, that inverter can only charge the battery the 48 volt battery uh, with 290 amps so um, I can get more off of the panels than it can actually put in the battery so th at that point it feeds the house whatever the house is using um, but I definitely over paneled my setup I'm wasting a lot of power on the sunniest days especially when the battery's full um what are you doing the attack cat found a hole get out of there um so just keep that in mind when you're looking at your setup uh look at the maximum um charge amperage and you could properly size your system to the charge amps but i can always add another inverter or more batteries but it's going to be a pain in the butt to add more solar panels so i wanted the most solar panels feasible at the time just because that's the pain pain to upgrade and then i've already added one battery i can add four more batteries on that shelf from um snr and then uh I could add another inverter if I wanted to. I don't have that much uh, load. Uh, and if I had another inverter, I'd have to throw another uh, breaker box in because I'm already, my breaker box is 72 amps. So that inverter can already max out my breaker box. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm up to here. Off grid, we've got the grid, and the whole reason I did this was because uh, they were the grid is supposed to be 220 volts. By the time it goes down this bullshit wire, and gets to my house, and they had a they had a uh, transformer way over there, 
feeding probably 60 homes or if not more so by the time i got the the voltage it was like 150 volts so i tried to talk to the power company which is pelco one and they basically told me to get bent but my neighbor stuck with it because he's running a resort next door and they wanted him to buy the uh transformer you can see it way down there they wanted him to buy it and he told them no and just kept complaining so that's another technique is uh, just keep complaining and show them the low voltage and they'll eventually get to you so they put a transformer at the end of the street and it only feeds the street we, st can st we still get low voltage sometimes uh, just because it's the philippines but for the most part that fixed the voltage situation but i already had my system i already had my solar and the power here is dirty as hell i mean it's voltage like all over the place all over the place it's ridiculous so i would have needed um an automatic voltage regulator avr anyways just to clean up the voltage and make it nicer so instead they wanted to give us low voltage so they won't get any business from me basically uh except when i flip over to them as a uh, as a backup so the way i have it set up is uh, when i flip over to the grid it'll no matter what my batteries are, are voltage on the batteries are or capacity on the batteries are it'll automatically take them up to 80 percent so when i flip over to the grid i'm sucking all the juice it's got pretty high amperage suck to charge those batteries up so i want them i want those batteries charged up quick uh, in case the grid goes down or like if we're in a, a hurricane or whatever situation and I want to bump up the charge on my batteries before the hurricane comes in, I'll just flip the grid on. It'll um, suck the juice, get them up to 80% real quick, and then uh, I can cut it off or do whatever I want during the storm. So anytime I flip to the grid, it's sucking juice. Um, and then it'll stop at 80%. And then... Uh, I'll just turn the grid off if need be at that point. So I do that maybe right now. I'm doing that maybe three times a month. Just if we have multiple days that are cloudy and high loads. And we've got, we run a washer and a dryer, electric dryer. All of our cooking is done with electric. We've got two um, water heaters at the shower. And... Um, We've got five mini splits, one and a half horsepower for four of them. And then uh, the biggest one is two horsepower for the room upstairs, which is 20 by 20 and gets all the heat from the roof. So that thing gets pounded. Um, we only run it at night, really, though. Sometimes during the day, if we need to be up there working or whatever, and we got plenty of sun, we'll just leave the AC running and it'll still charge the batteries by noon, even running that two ton or two horsepower air conditioning. So that's what we got going on out here. Uh, super happy with it, especially due to the voltage issues. Um, <clears throat> there was no clearance needed from the Brown guy or any of uh, the power company or anybody else since we're off grid. We just did what we wanted. We put up the, the ground mount put the panels on there got everything done those dudes came um, and installed the system in about a day and a half they spent the night they stayed overnight because they came from uh, four hours away <clears throat> so they crashed at the house and then uh, finished it up the next day so tips uh, just definitely get a lot of quotes because I got quotes from about about five hundred thousand I went with the second least expensive quote from about 500,000 to 2 million for the same same specs. So definitely get the quotes. Don't just talk to the first guy and let him install it because you could be spending way more than you need to be. Um, and pay attention when they're installing. Uh, there was some issues with the install that I didn't like. First issue was they they're normally setting up hybrid systems. So it, the grid stays running, and the solar and battery is only there for when there's a brownout. They don't normally do off-grid, and uh, they had the maximum charge amperage set to 100. So we went like that for like uh, two weeks till I figured that out. I'm like, man, 
I got 16,000 watts of solar out here. How come I'm only bringing in eight or 9,000? Pissing me off on a full Sunday. So I found that setting was set to 100. So I bumped it up to 200 because my DC breaker is 250 amp breaker. So I don't want to run, run that too hot. But I do have a bigger breaker, so I could uh, bump that up to the maximum, which I may or may not do. Um, I think I'll probably add another battery to it, so I'll have four batteries because they'll share the amperage amongst the batteries. I don't want to go over what those batteries can do. They can take a 100 amp uh, charge, and right now I can charge them about 50, 50 amps. So I, I don't want to stress them too much. They do fine, but the easier their life is, the longer they're going to last. So. And the other thing is, uh, pay attention to the copper that they use. I think that they used, um, on my DC wiring to the battery, I think they used uh, copper-coated aluminum. I haven't taken all their connections apart to check, but I do have the proper copper wire, and I've noticed that the wires that they put in, when I'm charging at max amperage those wires get warmer than the wires that i put in so i think they used uh copper coated aluminum wires which is a cost saving measure but it's a little bit uh shady so keep, keep an eye on that get prices um talk to a few few people get some brains involved and definitely over panel your system because you don't want to be on the roof. You don't want to be up over here. You don't want to be fooling with that crap later. But if you get too many panels, it's no problem. Your system will just take what it can use and discard the rest. If you don't have a big enough inverter or um, battery, you can add to that later. But the solar panels are kind of a pain in the ass. So pay attention to that kind of stuff. That would be my advice. And uh, just go for it, man. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Get a good inverter. I recommend Die brand. My neighbor's over there. He's he's running Die, and he's had his inverter sitting outside. Now it's covered, but it gets hot as hell here. And he's got one of the fans partially blocked, and that thing's been running for years. So if it can take that kind of abuse in the Philippines heat with one of the fans, the cooling fans blocked, uh, that's a good indicator of the quality of the device. So I'm I'm sold on those guys. Uh, I'd get another one in a heartbeat and. Uh, he got uh, an off-brand inverter for the solar panels on his roof straight from China, and he's not happy with it, so he's got to buy twice. So he's going to be getting another dye inverter to replace that China inverter because that thing sounds like a jet engine. Uh, it's super loud, and it's it's in an annoying place in his house. So uh, don't cheap out on the inverter. The, the, also, his user interface is not user-friendly. He's read the manual like 10 times trying to figure out what's what. So... Just, just get the get the quality, get a quality unit, and um, that way you don't have to spend that money again. All right, that's all I got. That's my system. Good luck to you. Like and subscribe.